Around 2010 to 2013 is roughly when the Japanese market for video games seemed to shift to try and appeal more to a Western audience. This included things such as changing visual styles and tones to do with characters and story for many different games. One of the more famous games that tried to do this was DMC Devil May Cry that had a massive negative reception due to the game changing the long-established character of Dante in both story and looks. This resulted in fans reacting heavily negatively towards it and overall it's remembered as a failure in its series history due to how drastic the changes were. Around this time period, Shoji Kawamori, a long-time mechanical designer and contributor to the mecha genre, did not work on Armored Core 5. And instead, the mechanical design was left to Masahiro Miki, who had worked on the A-series with From as a designer and concept artist from Armored Core Ninebreaker in 2004, who had worked on other games such as the Soul series and Chrome Hounds. While Kawamori has not designed everything in Armored Core, he has, for the longest time, held the role of mechanical designer since the first game. Due to this role, He's been in charge of the overall visual style and design of parts for the games, more or less supervising all other artists and bringing their ideas in to make sure they fit into the visual style and don't stand out too much. Because Kawamori had this role, he was able to bring some of his other experience from designing other things, such as the VF-1 from Macross, Japanese uh, Battletech, or other work on things such as Transformers, where he's most famous for designing Optimus Prime. With Kawamori at the helm, fans can go back and find a lot of parts and weapons that are sneaky references to other things Kawamori has worked on, or something very similar. So up until Armored Core 4, the series had this massive infusion of anime aesthetic to it, and this is partly what helped it gain popularity. It was essentially one of the very first 3D anime-inspired mech games to be sold in the West. This was also around the time that Toonami was starting to wear things like Gundam Wing for the first time, so this also helped AC's popularity, with people being unable to pick up a Gundam game easily in the West, but they could fantasize about building Gundam-like machines in Armored Core, which at this point was an almost annual franchise releasing once every couple of years. Coupled together with its anime-inspired designs from arguably one of the people who has had a massive hand in designing a lot of mecha that people are familiar with, AC grew over the years with each title gaining more popularity. This was until Armored Core 5. In 2006, From Software and Sega tried to appeal to the larger Western market by making Chrome Hounds, a customizable mech game featuring more realistic designs and sees the player as a pilot for one of many factions fighting for territory, with wars between factions in multiplayer unlocking certain parts or weapons, fighting against giant bosses in certain areas of the map or attacking people's bases, with the single player campaign more or less being a sideshow to the online multiplayer portion. To AC fans, this might sound very familiar, mainly due to the fact that it's almost exactly how people would come to describe AC5 roughly six years later, as it's almost the same. I pose this notion to you, viewer, that Armored Core 5 and its follow-up, Verdict Day, are polarizing visually and thus put off a lot of long-time fans, purely due to the lack of anime aesthetic and instead going in the same direction as Chrome Hounds. If you look in the comments, or if you've dived into the fanbase discussions a little, you'll see it around, people not enjoying the boxy or more tank-looking designs due to them not having the usual anime-inspired look. As a result, it doesn't look like an AC game, and with the changes to gameplay and story that according to some interviews claimed to be taking the series back to its roots, it doesn't really feel like an AC game either. Sure, there are some familiar elements here and there, but overall, with some fans, it isn't appealing because of this. You could even argue that, essentially, it's the sequel to Chrome Hounds, six years in the making. AC6 has been a myth in the fandom for ages now, with plenty of news outlets throwing out clickbait articles, one after another, as early as since AC5 was released, claiming that AC6 was in the works now for a good ten years. 
And for those who are used to an annual series, for it suddenly to be stopped while the creators focus on other series, such as the Soul series and Bloodborne, that's understandable. But with the new hype surrounding AC6, we get to see more of the game, and it's looking better than ever. Turning itself into a self-perpetuating hype machine. And the reason for this? I can throw you a few ideas. Number one, a new game after 10 years of nothing gives people a little hope that it'll be something familiar and fun again. Two, it's by a developer that has a long history of creating good games, popular mech games. Three, the removal of heavy contrasting lighting, massive amounts of bloom that would make your eyes water, or other post-process effects that made it hard to see anything in certain levels. Or four, AC actually looks like AC again. The last one for me is important, because it's yet to be confirmed as of me writing this, whether Kawamori has contributed to AC6, and in what capacity. He's been working on Demon X Machina, sure, but if he's had any involvement, it's going to be interesting. There's one thing that's for certain, though. What we're seeing in the visuals of AC6 before its launch, it's going back to its old style of looking more anime-inspired, so you're getting that almost anime-inspired mech game again. Gone is the seemingly uh, massive garage of 100 parts that all pretty much look like the same boxy designs or slightly smoothed out parts with some reactive armor placed on different versions of them to make them slightly different. And instead, we get the series iconic style again, throwing in things that look like they're straight out of Kawamori's old work. Things like uh, Macross and Aquarian. And god, if it's not a breath of fresh air after 10 years for some people, I don't know what to say. It's just nice having AC actually look like AC again after so long and such a drastic change that happened with AC5. And sure enough, a lot of people seem to agree. One thing I can say for certain is this. This feels like the greatest hits of AC in terms of it taking what seemingly worked in each era or entry and using it to make a game that looks like it's going to be a lot of fun to play and is familiar. It's almost like a, a wake-up to sleeping fans after so many years, and it's going to introduce AC to a wide community as well that isn't familiar with it, that comes from the, uh, the soul side of things. So everything's looking good for the future. I don't know if you agree with me on anything that I've said here, but I'd like to hear what you think in the comments down below. Let's get that discussion going because it's going to be interesting seeing where this goes from now until when AC6 is released on August the 25th. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this and I'll see you on the next video. Bye!